Hi there. In this lesson, we will move to our second group of pseudoclasses, the ones that work with forms. These pseudoclasses allow us to manipulate the styles of forms depending on their state. So let's see what I mean by that. We will go through all the highlighted ones that you see here on the screen. First of all, let's create a form in HTML. And we'll start by creating an input of type text. And let's place it in a p tag so that it takes up the entire width. And let's also add class imp1, for example. Alright, let's see what that looks like. There it is. It's kind of small, so in CSS we're going to write for input. We're going to add outline none so that we don't have that blue outline that we have here. And also font size about 18 pixels. Now save and refresh the page. And much better. The first pseudoclass that we're going to learn is Focus. This pseudoclass allows us to stylize the input whenever we click inside of it, whenever we focus on it. In order to use it, we will write the selector imp1, so this finds our input. And then colon, and we write focus. And say we want to add a little shadow when we focus. So we could add here box shadow, 0, 0, and 10 pixels. And say RGBA, 0, 0, 0, and 0 0.8. It's almost black with a low transparency. So let's see what we got. Refresh the page. Focus on the input field. And now we have a shadow around it. Perfect. Click somewhere else. The shadow is gone. Click back on. And shadow once more. Alright. So the input pseudoclass does indeed work. As you see. So the next one that we're going to learn is called Checked. In order to see how this one works, let's add another input in a separate p tag so that it's separated. And input of type, this will be type checkbox. So now we have our little checkbox. And we know that with inputs of type checkbox, you can't add any text to it by writing in the input tag. Suppose I write here value and then some text, like you can do in other cases of input. Then it's not going to affect anything. So instead of value, we need to give it an ID. Let's call it something like imp2. And now, in order to add the text that's going to be next to the input, we need to add a label tag with the text checkbox that we wanted to add earlier. Okay? So, but now for the label, there is a mandatory attribute called for, and this is where we specify the idea of the input tag that is for. Now let's check it out. See what we've got? And there it is. So basically the check pseudoclass is used to stylize the input or elements next to it when the checkbox is checked. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's say if our checkbox is checked. We're going to change the color of the label and we'll also give it a background of some kind. So for that we need to write id imp2 since it has an id And then a colon and the word checked. And say we set the color to red and we can set the background to yellow.
However, the way it is now, if I refresh the page and check the checkbox, you're not going to see anything yet. Now why is that? Well, that's because the input doesn't have any text of its own. So the color is not applicable here. And also, it takes up the entire space of the block that it's in. So the background doesn't get affected either. Just nothing to see there. Alright, so what do we do in order for the label to get these styles? Well, we need to set it up so that when the input is checked, the label which is next to it gets the styles that we set. To select another tag, if it's next to our input tag, all we need to do is add the plus selector and then select the label next to it. Alright, let's recap that again. If the input is checked, then we find the label next to it and apply the styles listed. Let's see if that works. Refresh the page, click on the checkbox, and there we have it. Uncheck, and it's gone. The types of inputs that became available in HTML5, like email, phone, etc., they have pseudo classes like valid and invalid. So basically, they have a valid state and an invalid state. Well, let's see what I mean with an example. Let's create another p tag in which we're going to create an input of type email. And let's give it a class, say imp3, just to keep things simple here. And let's see. So here's our input. So basically I can type anything here if it follows the email format or if it doesn't. And we know that the email format is first some kind of words, some letters, maybe some numbers, then we have the at sign and then the domain. So if it's written something like this, then it's a valid email because it fits the format. But if we write it like this, then it's not a valid email. So depending on whether the information follows the correct format or not, we can apply two different sets of styles. Basically, there are two different pseudo classes for that. We got valid and we got invalid. So let's see how that works. Let's say if our imp3 is valid, then we'll set a border for it. Say 3 pixels solid and green. And if it's invalid, then we'll also add a border that's 3 pixels solid, but a red color. And let's see if it works. Refresh the page, and so far we don't have anything, so it's just green. But if I type a letter, you see it turns red instantly. That's because what I have currently doesn't match the proper format. It's just a letter that's not an email address. And if I hover over here, it says, please include an at in the address. And now let's add a few more letters, and then we're going to add the at sign. So it's still wrong, it says it's incomplete. But as soon as we add another letter, now it shows it's the correct format. And if we end it with a period, it's wrong again. So it's the red color. Alright, so that makes sense. Great. Now the last pseudo classes that we're going to consider are enabled and disabled. Well, they can allow us to stylize some elements based on whether those are available to us or not. What do I mean by that? Well, let's say I create another input of type submit. That is, an input that submits our form, right? So let's name this class imp4. Let's see. There it is. And we can click on it like that. And every input has a disabled attribute, which makes the element inactive. Let's see what it looks like. Here it is. It's faded and I can't click on it. So the valid and invalid classes 
allow us to stylize this button for both its enabled and disabled states. Alright, let's select Submit button, IM4 that is. And then we're going to write Enabled. And say when this button is available to us, it's going to be blue. See what that looks like. It doesn't work right now, because currently we have the disabled attribute. So let's remove that. And there it is, the blue color. Now, let's copy this and change enabled to disabled. And let's change the color to red. Let's see if that works. Currently it's blue, because the button works. Now, let's add the disabled attribute. And now it's red, and we cannot click on it. Alright, so that's how the pseudo-classes work with the forms. That's it for this video, we look forward to seeing you in the next one.